So, you want to lose weight for summer? Well, in this video, I'm revealing exactly what I'm telling people to do. Because as a dietitian, I have the proven strategies that work. If you're new here, I'm Maria, welcome to the channel. Now, feeling full and staying full is the name of the game when it comes to weight loss. And thankfully, there are proven strategies to help us do this. So today, I'm going to give you eight of them. Avoid liquid calories if you're trying to lose weight. For some reason, when people think about diets and weight loss, what always comes to mind is drinking juices and smoothies. And I find this so funny as a dietitian because it's the complete opposite of what I recommend. The only time I really recommend these sorts of drinks is if I have a client who has a poor appetite or who is struggling to put on weight. The complete opposite. Because liquid calories do not provide us with the same satisfaction as biting and chewing our food. They are also already partially digested because they are blended down, so your body doesn't have to do much work. Think about the effort your body would have to go to to eat, chew, and break down an apple in comparison to just drinking some apple juice. Plus, we can typically consume a lot more food in its liquid form than if we were to eat it in its whole form. Now, I'm also gonna give you a practical example. Okay, so we're gonna take these two glasses and we're gonna pretend that they are your stomach. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the first stomach with liquid. Now, as you can see, every last nook and cranny and edge here is filled to the brim with liquid. Well, not this part. We're gonna take another example, take this stomach and fill it with salad. Lots of different types of crunchy salad. Now, there is still space here. It's about the same amount full, but there's still space in between all the different nooks and crannies. And it's the same thing in your stomach, just a little bit more complex. You can fill it with a lot more liquid. Even this glass is a lot heavier than this glass right now. So in summary, filling your stomach with crunchy whole food is a better option. Now I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos. And if you're looking for some healthy recipe inspiration, I'd recommend following me over on Instagram. Now I recommend intermittent fasting for some people, but not for the reasons that you might think. It doesn't seem to do anything magical to help you lose weight. But for most people where they're going wrong or where they're struggling is that after dinner snacking or that late night munch. And if you start to tell yourself that come 7 p.m. you're finished eating, you're done for the day, no more chocolates or crisps, this can dramatically help. Now you don't have to go to extreme eating windows, like only eating within a six hour period, for example. I don't think this is practical for most people, particularly if you have a job or a family or a social life. But what I will often recommend and what works for many of my clients is following a 12 hour period. So for example, if you have breakfast at 7 a.m., your last meal or snack would be again around 7 p.m. that evening. And this little bit of structure can really help for some people. If you want, you could try and reduce it to 10 hours, but a 12 hour window is pretty good for most. Plus, it'll really help with your digestion and nobody likes feeling bloated over the summer. Now, the next thing that we can do is look at volume eating. We want to see more food on the plate because if you're smart, weight loss does not need to be about cutting things out. And seeing more food on the plate also gives us a lot more mental satisfaction. And dieting is a mental game just as much as it is a physical game. So take your plate or bowl at every meal and half of it should be fruit, vegetables, or salad. These foods are high in volume yet much lower in calories. And again, your stomach is essentially a bag. So filling it with these foods is much more effective for weight loss. Now there is an extreme on social media where people take volume eating a little bit too far and they start adding zero calorie noodles and cauliflower rice to everything. And that's not gonna work either. You're just gonna feel awful and really bloated all of the time. But taking a common sense approach to adding more fruits, vegetables, and salads to your meals will be a big help. And we eat with our eyes too, so this will really help with satisfaction. I'll give you an example of someone I had in clinic recently who was really struggling with portion control around rice in the evenings at his dinner. So what we decided to do was we swapped half of the regular rice for cauliflower rice. So he was still getting his rice and it looked like the same amount of food. And he came back to me a few weeks later and he said, Maria, I didn't even notice the difference. Again, because he was looking down at his plate, it looked like the same amount of food. We had just made this little tweak. And it's all of these little changes over time that began to accumulate. What happens with so many people when they go on a diet is they take two big steps forward and then three giant leaps back. Because if you over restrict food, binges are inevitable. Comment below if you can relate to this. But what happens to a lot of people is that they are really motivated at the start. They make huge changes and they can keep it up for a little while. 
and then one evening it all just quickly unravels. And that packet of biscuits that you've been avoiding all week, you've now just had three of them in one sitting. I want you to do an exercise here. I want you to hold your breath for as long as you can, or even simply imagine your head underwater. When you finally come up for air or allow yourself to breathe again, you don't just calmly take breaths. No, you come up gasping for air. And it's the same thing if you deprive yourself of food. You come out of this grasping for all the food that you can gather. And this is a normal reaction to hunger. There is nothing wrong with you. If you starve anyone for long enough, they will lose all control around food and they will be raiding the cupboards. And we don't want this to happen. So the two main things to do is number one, do not over restrict. You still need to make sure that you're eating enough. Yes, you may need to eat a little bit less if you're trying to lose weight, but you still need to eat a decent amount of food every single day. I have had clients come to me who have been trying to consume the same amount of calories that I wouldn't even recommend for a toddler. That's not going to work. I would never advise a calorie deficit over 400 calories and a 1200 calorie diet is not for anyone. And the next thing that you need to keep in your diet to avoid this is satisfaction. I strongly believe that you do not need to remove your favorite foods if you're trying to lose weight. You can still eat cake, chocolate or whatever, but it's just being mindful of the amount. And sometimes with these foods, it's just the taste that you need. You don't necessarily need to have the full big massive slice of cake. So I would always encourage people not to completely remove their favorite foods. Now, if you're not using protein to your advantage when trying to lose weight, you are really missing out. For decades, there has been this low carb versus low fat war between the diets. But what everybody can agree on is that protein helps with weight loss. Higher protein diets help you feel fuller when you're trying to lose weight. But interestingly, they have also been shown to help maintain pleasure when dieting. So that's important because I keep banging on about it. But you can't be miserable and expect to be okay with staying miserable for as long as it takes you to lose the weight. You actually want to find it easier and even more enjoyable to make these changes because then you can keep them up for life. And that is the key to success here. Quick four week diets don't work. Now protein can also help preserve your muscle mass. So in other words, if you lost 10 kg and if you're eating enough protein, it's more likely that this 10 kg weight loss was fat loss rather than muscle. And this is important because muscle is what maintains that nice definition and it also helps with our metabolism. Now, if you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably heard about the weight loss drug Ozempic, the drug that is successfully helping millions of people to lose weight. And one of the ways that it is doing this is by interfering with your hunger and fullness signals. And interestingly, protein can do the same thing. It prevents the release of a hunger hormone called ghrelin and encourages the secretion of the hormones that are designed to make us feel full. Now, if you want to know more about how much protein you should be eating, you can watch this video here. Now many of us know that sleep is important but we underestimate its role in helping us maintain our weight and I want you to just think about it really practically for a second. We sleep to recharge our batteries and to gain energy and another place that we gain energy is from food. So if you're not sleeping and regaining your energy this way your brain is going to prompt you to look for more energy in other sources, which is eating more food. And study after study shows that sleep deprivation leads to higher calorie intakes the next day. So trying to prioritize sleep is key. Now I know everyone has different life demands and this might not be as practical for everyone, but it might be an easier thing to change than trying to join a gym or start a new running program, for example. Now this one's going to be unpopular because I know everyone seems to like alcoholic beverages that little bit more over the summer. But alcohol can contain quite a lot of calories. A bottle of wine has almost 700 calories and somebody can easily consume a day's worth of calories on one night of drinking. And not only this, but when we drink, our inhibitions are lower. So you're less likely to say no to the chips being passed around or that cheese board. Plus, you might go to the chipper or grab a pizza on the way home and not even remember that you ate that the next day. And then, sorry, it's going to get worse, but the next day you are low in energy, you're hungover, and all you wanna do is sit on the couch and eat a takeaway. So it's like a domino effect. Now, I'm not telling you not to enjoy yourself. I'm just giving you the information and you can do with it what you will. Now, finally, I just want us to get real about what we can do. Summer is probably already here by the time you're watching this video, but I do believe it's never too late if you're motivated to try to improve your health. However, research shows that safe weight loss is five to 10% of your body weight within three to six months or 0.5 to 1% weight loss per week. So if you're hundred kg, this would look like one kg weight loss per week or one to two pounds. And you don't want to go any higher than this because what happens if you crash diet or you lose weight too quickly is that you lose weight, but you don't maintain it you end up gaining it back with a few extra pounds. And then over time, your set weight becomes higher and higher. And this is what we call metabolic adaptation. 
And that's because when you try to diet too extremely, your body tries to stay alive and it tries to preserve energy. So it lowers your basal metabolic rate. You also lose muscle mass, which isn't good because muscles burn calories. So what happens is, for example, a client might lose three stone, but then gain four. They might lose two, but then gain three. And over time, they get heavier and heavier. And we know by now that restrictive diets do not work. Yes, you can try to lose weight, but you need to also be thinking how you're going to maintain this weight loss. And the key there is lifestyle change. Now that is eight strategies to help you manage your weight, but there are so many more. So let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a part two because really I'm only touching the surface today. As a thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video, I want to let you know about my free recipe ebook, which I've linked in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you again next week.